Hello and welcome to Andy's Cornish Creations. In this project I'm going to be turning a darning mushroom. We've got here mounted between centres a U Cornish U log and it's about three inches in diameter and uh, it's about five inches long. Here I'm using a, a 3 8 inch spindle gouge but you could um, of course use a, a roughing gouge to get this down to round. tightened up the tailstock I will need to get rid of the bark on this so the uh, the overall size of the mushroom when it's finished will depend on uh, on uh, what what point I get rid of the bark. I certainly at it, it, its widest point. Here I'm getting ready to put a tenon on so that I can mount the piece onto uh, onto a chuck. You could you could turn this between centers but uh, if you've got a chuck it's much easier to get it mounted on a chuck and then if you do need to take the tailstock away you can uh, you can do so and it's still uh, held firmly. This I'm using a half inch skew chisel to put the dovetail onto the uh, onto the tenon because my uh, chuck has dovetail jaws and there it is mounted in the chuck it's a three inch oh no it's four inch chuck a record power chuck Eighth in spindle gouge. I'm just turning the top. Uh, that's going to be the uh, sort of dome of the mushroom. I'm still trying to get rid of that bark. I don't want to make it much smaller. Uh, keeping the tailstock support as long as I can even though it's securely fastened into the chuck I do like to have this added safety of the tailstock support this is a thin parting tool in a record power a thin parting tool I'm just, just using to undercut the, the mushroom head and now back to the 3 8 spindle gouge I'm going to be getting rid of 
quite a lot of material now. So I'm, uh, I'm going down as for the stem of the uh, mushroom. trying to create is a nice sort of ergonomic shape that's going to fit nicely into your into your hand and feel comfortable to hold while you're uh, darning. I was going to try and do it all with the uh, spindle gouge, but sometimes I, I kind of think that it feels a bit like cheating using a uh, carbide tool. That uh, that when you've got a a nice small round carbide cutter and you want to create a, a sort of a, a round undercutting, there, it's uh, it's nice and easy to do it with this, and uh, the easy way is the best way sometimes. You can see the carbide cutter there has made a, a slightly awkward uh, cut really easy. It's going to take the sharp edge off of there, off the bottom there, bottom lip. the top off. Now I've got the final sort of dimensions. I'll just try and get a nice smooth top. And I don't really need the tailstock support now. So, uh, so I'll be able to remove that soon. And uh, this is the um, one inch skew chisel and I like to use that to get rid of uh, with the <coughs> with the um, spindle gouge it can leave little sort of peaks and troughs on the piece and this uh, the skew with it having a broader flat surface it does uh, make a nice job of flattening everything out and it's, Keeps you sanding down to a minimum. My other spindle gouge that I've, uh, I've shaped to a, a, a sort of a finer point. And, uh, it's really handy to get to get in for uh, sort of detailed work and, uh, and something like this where you the point will go in and just almost part it off with the with the spindle gouge. See, we've got a nice, nice finish on that top. But uh, I'll 
probably come back with the skew I think again here just to just to smooth out any you finish it with a little nib on the right on the point where you where you take it off and this uh, the skew chisel will just flatten that out because even the sanding it's, uh, if you've got that little raised nib in the middle, it's really difficult to sand it out. So uh, if I can get rid of it with a skew, it'll save me, save me work, a lot of work with the sanding. Back to the stem. Just get a work out a final shape. I've got the thin parting tool again. That's as long as it's, the piece is going to be, so if I can part it down, it gives me something to work to. It's a lovely piece of U, and uh, that piece is about an inch piece at the bottom. I'll use that for another project. You can start to see the sort of shape I'm going for now. Just a rounded bottom to the mushroom. the bottom end there, it's a bit difficult to get in and then uh, spin more gouge. I might have to take a bit more of the bulk of the, uh, the sort of off cut. Again, back with the um, carbide cutter. See internal curve. You can't use the inch wide skew because it'll dig in on the edges, it'd be too wide. And now I can do a bit of sanding from 80 grit down to 400. And probably when I get down to about 240 I'll put a little bit of sanding sealer on, let it dry and then carry on see the sanding. Yeah, we've speeded up to, I think it's uh, two times the speed. Applying some sanding, uh, some abrasive paste. It was on about uh, 500 revs for sanding, and now I've speeded it up to about um, a thousand revs. Apply the paste and get a bit of heat in there because there is there's still some wax in with the paste. Finish up with some wood wax 22. And this does need a bit of heat before it uh, before it polishes up. Just creating a bit of heat friction. And there. 
a lovely piece of wood and it always polishes up nice uh, you and always looks good so now I want to part it off That's uh, my uh, half inch skew. I like to do it with a skew because it, uh, it leaves a, quite a nice clean edge and, um, and there's very little sanding after, after you've done it with a skew. I decided to leave a little detail on the bottom just by accident and I decided to leave it there just as a bit of a feature. holding it with one hand and parting it with the other. There we go. A little bit of hand sanding on the bottom just to finish it off. That's it. A lovely piece of wood. Okay, so there we have it. One Darning mushroom in yew, English yew wood, um, Cornish yew wood in fact. It's, uh, I mean the wood's really lovely as it always is and, uh, and it always polishes up nice and, uh, and, and looks lovely. Uh, but again quite a simple thing and um, it's just like turning one of the, one of the mushrooms um, and, uh, and it's useful. I'm always getting holes in my socks, especially in the heels. So, um, so I'm, I'm hoping to put that into good use. <laughs> um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, uh, uh, share, and all those good things, and um, and please leave a comment. I do, uh, I do like to see the comments. And um, from a windy, a very windy. And it's been a bit, been a bit rainy these last few days. Are, uh, a very windy Cornwall. My name's Andy Paramore. This is Andy's Cornish Creations, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. Okay, so here we go. I've got these are woolen socks, so I've got a, uh, a length of wool and a darning needle, and. Uh, this is filmed in real time. As you can see, I'm a really quick sewer through years and years of practice and experience. <laughs> Not. <laughs> so this is about four times speed. And, um, and I'm putting some threads across the length of the hole. And now I'm going across them and weaving in and out and every other row I'm going the opposite way weaving in and out of the wool and then fixing it into the into the sock at each end so just working my way across some of the eagle-eyed amongst you will spot that Socks looking a bit grubby. It, <laughs> the sock that I came in from the workshop with <laughs> got a hole in it, so I thought, well, <laughs> it, it was the right sized hole as well. If it's too small, it's not worth showing. But this was a good sized hole, and it just shows how how the darning process works. So uh, apologies for that, but uh, I'll get in there first because someone <laughs> someone will always point it out. <laughs> There's always somebody out there that will uh, either point out something like that or the fact that I've got mucky fingernails or something. <laughs> but there you go. So that's a hole in a sock mended and I'll get, a, I'll get a, a good few months out of that before I have to uh, either mend them again or 
throw them away but they're, they're good socks and it's a shame to throw them away right a little bonus here and a little visit to uh, Lanhydrock Country House and this is the uh, it's uh, February late February and the um, this is in the gardens and the magnolias are all out in full blossom uh, this is filmed on my phone so the quality of the uh, film isn't great but, uh, but it's still nice to see this is the church in the grounds of the house uh, the house belongs to belonged to the uh, robot family and now it belongs to the national trust and uh, and the, the church there is only a only about sort of 20 meters yards away from the house this is the that's the gatehouse at the front of the uh, property and a walled garden It's a, a lovely place, not far from Bodmin in Cornwall. Anyway, thanks for sticking with me till the end, and um, have a good weekend, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.